Hi everybody, I'm Justin Booth and I'm here to show you the hatching brushes for Painter Essentials. So I'm going to start from the top with the circular uh, hatching brush and this one is very simple and what you can see is I've got my opacity on 30%. Um, what I recommend with these brushes is that you have somewhat of a lower opacity um, if you want to do more delicate. If you have it bold, you know, I like both uh, delicate sketching and then bold illustrating. And uh, if you want to do it bold, that's, you know, of course, in your kind of creative range there. But you can see that, that the lower that I go, the more delicate things get. So something to keep in mind with all of these brushes. Um, you can kind of see how you can even make a transition there. Um, so you can see kind of how this brush works already just as I'm going through that. You can, you can cross through and... I actually really like that kind of transitioning idea. Um, you can kind of see how that made some depth there. I actually just kind of came up with that on accident and I'm very happy with myself. Um, so let's move on to the next brush now that we know what that brush does. And this one is called Corners. And what it is, as you can see, is it's a bunch of little corners that are kind of spraying out of my pen. My, print, my pen is a Wacom. Uh, tilt sensitive pen and if you have one of those or a pen that is tilt sensitive you'll notice that it sprays out the end it doesn't go down straight I'm actually poking my pen down straight like this it's always gonna kinda wanna get a nice spray of that It kinda helps with the calligraphy of it um, you can do this really small or and this is a small canvas by the way or you can do them really big and you can see that it gives almost a fundamental difference in how the brush works. So um, go ahead and play with that if you want to try these out. Uh, the detail brush right here, I really like this brush because if I'm doing an ink illustration and I have a little portion that I want to just do some little, you know, if you've ever inked before, you know that details are really a bunch of little spots, little nicks in the paper. Um, to give it some texture and detail. But this, if, if I press on it, I give it a little pressure, it's going to give me some cool results. And you can also turn down your opacity there. Now that I know about that transitional thing, that would be kind of cool to play with as well. Um, if you have it on a low opacity and... Anyways, you can see what this does. I get carried away with these brushes very easily. Um, so let's go to the grass brush and this one is fun. Um, I recommend playing with the size on this as well. It does also make a fundamental difference. Uh, I gave it the name grass because it's got a little bit of a curve to it, which is a little more organic than straight lines. Um, and you can see how that we get this nice organic hatching effect and the grass is kind of a name to kind of remind you that's kind of what it does. So let's move on to the next brush, Hatch. And I really like this brush because it is so intentional. Um, you can go up and down with it. You can cross over. You can actually, in some way, you can kind of paint with this brush a little bit. If I want to paint a door and go over the go over the door with some hatches and get a little doorknob in there, I can almost like paint this kind of blurry, kind of whimsical painting. Um, you've seen lots of drawings like that, and traditionally we have line work down, but it is kind of fun to play with with or without the line work. Uh, so let's go over to pen. I like this one because if you find a little spot in the corner that you really just want to do some quick work with but nothing fancy, you can certainly do that, and this does some cool double line effects that you can hatch with as you're drawing more into your image. Let's go to pointed and this one is really fun to make some cool calligraphy effects and play with the opacity of this one as well this is 100 percent i'm going to go down to 50 percent i'm going to go down to 20 percent or well, maybe 30. and you can see i could if i were to render out a cloud or something maybe with some white ink this is a really cool way to have some very um, unique effects in your artwork Let's go to Scribbles. This one is one of those that, depending on the size you use it, it's going to be a different effect. If you use it really small, it's a very limited range of where it's scribbling, and you know, 
You can do all sorts of sorts of cool rendering with that. If you do it large, um, it seems to kind of go all over the place in more of a back and forth because it's got more range to do that with. Um, so play around with that. Play with the size and, and see what kind of little uh, cool effects you can get accidentally. It's kind of cool. I just did that in like three strokes, you know. Um, I didn't have to grind my teeth or anything. Uh, I tend to, like, I like to scribble. I prefer it, but I do like these brushes when I'm working digitally. They're just kind of like, I'm just trying to work. And the great thing about technology is it can do some of that work for us if we are providing um, the direct intention. Uh, so let's move on to the last brush of the Painter Essentials pack, and this is Speedy. This is sort of similar to the Corners brush. Um, and it's only 40%. Let's get that up so you can really see. You can see this one, I say, reminds me of resume paper. Both of them kind of do, but this one is more of a fast, shaky, jittery version of this. And uh, they're kind of fun to, to play with together there. Um, anyways, that's all 10 brushes for the Painter Essentials Hatching Brush Pack. And um, like I said in my other video, I'm really interested in seeing what other people make with these brushes. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you around the net.